three, two, one, go! Woo! Welcome along guys. Well today we're going to do a comparison review, a direct comparison between the brand new 2020 Super Duke R and the brand new Kawasaki ZH2. Now this is a bike brand new to the market, new for 2020, a supercharged 1000cc monster. I'm going to let you know how these bikes ride, how they differ from the riding position, how those different sorts of engine characteristics affect that ride, how do they handle compared to each other and just the overall features and finish of these machines. This should be a good one. Roll the intro, Chopsy. So firing up the Super Duke. This is obviously a big V-twin. So the first thing where these bikes differ is obviously the way these bikes make their similar power. 180, 190 brake horsepower, let's say. The KTM is obviously a huge, great V-twin. 1,301 cc. So she's an absolute monster of a V-twin. Now V-twins obviously make their power very differently to what straight fours do even if the straight four has got a supercharger bolted onto it it's a very different sort of ride v twins give you instant power instant power as soon as you turn the throttle grip you have power and that and that changes the way the whole bike rides it means the slightest throttle input and you're just motoring instantly doesn't really matter what the revs are doing obviously the higher up the rev range the more you're motoring, 3,000 revs, third gear, crack the throttle, 60 miles an hour. Let's try that on the H. Let's do it. 60 miles an hour. <laughs> I'd say that was pretty darn close actually. The H2 has a straight four engine, so it's, it doesn't deliver the same sort of punch as the KTM, but the trick up this bike's sleeve is it's got the supercharger. So it's not relying on the normal straight four top end. It's got the supercharger to give it some grunt bottom end and make it absolutely supersonic at the top end. It's a little bit flatter than the Super Duke. The Super Duke definitely has more of an initial punch, or it feels like it does. This takes a little bit longer to spin up to spool that supercharger up, to get that boost on. But when it starts to spool, my God, it absolutely flies. Oh, listen to that chirping. Other differences with the V-Twin, because you've got massive, two massive pistons firing up and down within the engine, obviously that does create some vibrations. KTM have done an amazing job of, of reducing the vibrations on this machine by using counterbalancing shafts, all sort of latest tech, but there is still the tiniest of vibrations. You get a little bit of shaking through your ass, a tiny bit through the bars. It's not intrusive, not by any stretch of the imagination, not compared to a lot of early twins, but it's not as silky smooth as that Kawasaki. The vibes from the straight four are obviously brilliant. It's very, very smooth. That's the first thing you notice when you get on this, just how smooth the engine is. There's none of that V-twin vibrations. I mean, the KTM's pretty good, but this is so smooth. There's a little bit of tingly vibrations with the straight four, and there's a little bit of tingly vibrations through the seat, a few tingles through the bars, but overall, super smooth. Beanage, whoa! It's fast. It is very, very fast. So how do these two engines compare when it comes down to straight line performance? How can we tell which one of these fine machines is actually the quickest? Well, my brother-in-law, Greg, who had the 300 TPI Supermoto video above, he sold that now, by the way, is actually just bought a brand new 2020 Super Duke 
So we went out and did some compar performance comparisons between the Super Duke and the Z. We did a little bit of a drag race up to 60 miles an hour to see which one is the quickest. Roll the VT chops. Right, let's have a little drag race with the Super Duke. A little draggy waggy. Three, two, one, go. Whoa! I think my front wheel was off the ground the whole time. Right, ready? Three, two, one, go. Oh. Three, two, one, go. Very oh, quick, aren't they? As you can see, at one point the KTM one, then the, then the Z one. You know, it all comes down to the, the launch. Well, even though we weren't launching, it all comes down to how the wheelie control is cutting the throttle. That, that's how you start to pull away. The wheel comes up too much, the anti-wheelie kills it, and they lose time. So I think the Z is definitely faster. The Z has it by a pinch. It's slightly quicker than the KTM, but it all comes down to how that power is put down to the road. The electronics on both of these bikes are very, very good. They both have the IMUs. They both have all of the latest features like cornering ABS, all of that high techness. High techness? I have to say the general feeling when you're riding is that the KTM electronics are a little bit better. I think KTM has more experience with these IMUs, they've been running in, um, running them across their whole range of bikes for many years, whereas Kawasaki has only really started dabbling in IMUs fairly recently and only on a limited number of bikes in their range. You can also do more with the electronics on the KTM. You can turn off the anti-wheelie while leaving the traction control on. You can adjust how much slip you have, if you go into track mode, you can then adjust how much slip the, the traction control gives so that there's much more sophisticated. Those are options you have to pay extra for, I should just add, but it does give much more configurability. Is that a word? It is now. It's a very, very different riding position to the KTM. It's quite wide, so your legs are splayed out. You're very upright, you're not down over the bars. The bars are up high, you're upright. I actually find the seat really quite uncomfortable on this bike. It's very thin and towards the back of the seat you can feel the actual seat structure on your ass. So it's really not as comfortable as the KTM. The seat could be thicker. My H2 is the same. I don't know what it is with Kawasaki and not putting enough padding in their seats. It's obviously made for little Japanese bottoms, not big fat European <laughs> chops bums. This is a bike built to be a naked, but they have given it a sporty edge. The old bike was very much a sit up and beg position, a bit like the Z. With this one, they have brought the pegs a little bit higher. They've, they've canted you forward slightly. You've got a little bit of weight on your wrists. You're not set up and beg position. You're down a little bit. You feel sporty the moment you get on the bike. For mediocre suspension, let's call it. It's not budget suspension, it's mediocre suspension. And the bike is heavy. The bike is 235 kilos. So there's a lot of weight transfer when you're on and off the brakes, which is why I think the bike could have really benefited from some higher spec suspension, perhaps. It's quite well damped, you know, they, they, it's not absolutely terrible but it's certainly not as performance focused as the KTM. The suspension on the KTM is sublime. <laughs> it's how I would describe it. I think it's equal to Olin's. That's how good it is. Not only is it taut, tight, gives amazing feedback from the road, it's also incredibly plush. The Super Duke has always suffered because it never had preload adjustment on the forks. Now there is some preload adjustment. You've got rebound, compression dampening, and now preload. The rear shock has a remote preload adjuster, so you can dial in. I've just dialed in an extra 10 clicks on the rear shock via the remote preload adjuster. So that's, it's so easy to set this suspension up for you. You haven't got to mess about with 
spanners and perhaps even taking the shock off the suspension on the KTM is leagues ahead of the suspension on the Z and it actually gives the whole bike a much tauter tighter feel on the road this, this is a an absolute performance machine the engine is all about performance it's an amazing power plant gives incredible performance the chassis the suspension is equal to that performance so as a package the whole thing just works absolutely Mwah! through the twisties the KTM gives such good feedback an incredible amount of feedback and that instant bottom end just pulls you out the corners it's incredible in the twisties the suspension is plush but it's definitely geared up to be performance orientated I can feel every little bump in the road and if you were going touring spending a long time on this bike that could perhaps become a little bit tiresome but it's incredible if you want to open it up give it some welly I can't really feel very well what the road is doing in front of me the texture of the tarmac is, is lost on me a little bit I'm not getting that same levels of feedback as what I had with the KTM round here and that ultimately slows you down because you don't feel as confident to push on without that feedback from the from the road beneath you around the corners it will handle it will let you force it into going round but it's not as happy with it it is so so fast you can almost get a bit out of shape i don't know if it's got a steering damper the, the the handlebars waggle a bit as the wheel comes up you get the impression that the it's almost a bit too powerful for its own chassis and suspension i'm not sure i'd like it if you did get this chip to 250 horsepower i think it could get in all sorts of shapes which <laughs> you wouldn't want it to be in it's pushing the limits of its chassis with the power it's got i would say yeah but it has got a boost gauge oh i really want past these two people and there's my gap overtaking is an absolute breeze absolute breeze <laughs> it is an absolute hooligan if you well if you want it to be a hooligan it will give you that hooligan feedback, that hooligan thrill. But it is just as happy to cruise at 30, 40 miles an hour. The work they've done on this engine is just, the throttle response and everything is just incredible. I've never ridden a bike which has got such a, a beautiful feeling throttle. A little tie bend like this. You can lay it down, a little bit flat at the bottom. It will do it, but it's not overly happy with doing it. On the front brake, quick shifter and blipper, beautiful. It is extra low. Out of the bend. <laughs> Wheelie control, keeping it in check, but letting you have a bit of fun as well. In sport mode, you can. it will let the wheel come up but it will keep you in check it won't let you get too out of shape this thing is all about rider thrills to ride slowly is perfectly well mannered it's, it's got impeccable manners all the controls are beautiful the throttle response is also beautiful on this it's very well fueled again you know it, a bike of this power with the supercharger Kawasaki spent a long time getting the fueling and throttle response cock on but everything's nice I mean the clutch feel the brakes have got a lovely feel to them they're not top of the range style emas like on the Super Duke but they still deliver an excellent amount of feel an excellent amount of braking capability not quite as good as the KTM however they don't quite give you the same level of confidence the dash they both got TFTs I do prefer the KTM you can do configure it more you can show different amounts of information you've got things like tyre pressure 
tyre pressures on here as well. You've got oil temperature, you've got water temperature, you've got outside air temperature. The Z has some gimmicky things like the G meter, the lean angle sensors, stuff you can't actually look at while you, when you want to look at them because you can't take your eyes off the road. If you're flying around the bend thinking what, what lean angle am I getting, you're going to crash. Fuel consumption, this is pretty thirsty I would say. You know, you don't buy a supercharged motorcycle because it's good on petrol at the end of the day and she is a little thirsty. I seem to have to fill this bike up every time I go out on it. She does have a little bit of a drinking problem. I think you're getting the point really, these two bikes are designed with different things in mind. The KTM is very much a performance orientated bike, but it can still do the around town, it can still do the just going out and enjoying the scenery. That motor is so tractable, it doesn't become frustrating if you're in town. Yeah, it's a little bit more vibey than the ZH2, that thing is so smooth. But this isn't just a one-trick pony. I thought this was a one-trick pony when I first picked it up, but it's absolutely not. It can do the slow speed stuff as well as it does the high speed stuff. And that is the absolute beauty of this machine. I think the people who will buy this bike are the people who just want to go very, very fast. They're not necessarily that interested about handling performance around the twisties, taking their bike on track. They just want to go very, very fast. Perhaps they have to ride a naked because they can't get on with the sports bike riding position. This bike goes very, very fast. The KTM is so much more of a complete package. All right, mate, calm down. The KTM is so much more a complete package. There's no weak points. On the Z, you can very much see the weak points in the suspension, you know, where they have cut costs to get that engine, that supercharged engine into a bike. There's been some cost cutting. And the seat's uncomfortable. Did I say that? Ooh, look at that nose. A nose only a mother could love. This is power level one, which is full power. <laughs> I told you I was scared about that. Whoa! I've never dropped a bike before in my life. Whoa! <laughs> that's it. That's it. <laughs> Listen to me. Never mind getting beard up. Give me this any day of the week. <laughs> oh, I must give a quick shout out to Millie. Hi Millie. You know who you are. 